egotistical, so unpredictable Here on the SNL Network Hello and happy holidays to all of our SNL Network listeners And welcome to another edition of the SNL Network Super Fan Takeover uh, I am so excited uh, to be here tonight uh, on tonight's show, we are going to be ta talking about our favorite uh, SNL holiday sketches of all time. We have a bunch of categories we're going to get through. But first, I want to introduce you guys to our panel. First, we have uh, Bill Kenny. Uh, Bill, uh, how you doing? I'm doing well, Sammy. Good to be here. Uh, very much in the holiday mood after watching hours upon hours of SNL, Christmas, and Hanukkah. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we recently did our Halloween special, and I found doing this um, episode that there are a lot more holiday and Christmas sketches of SNL than there were Halloween sketches, which was kind of interesting to see. Uh, but great. Great to have you tonight. And uh, next, let's turn it over to Haynes. Haynes, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. So excited to be back on a, a super fan takeover and to have TJ Kringle with us tonight. So we, we've got an excellent panel. Um, like you said, you know, it was exhausting trying to uh, go back and, and relive some of these great um, holiday moments. I uh, can't say that I got through all 47 years of every single, um, uh, you know, ho holiday sketch, but I, th but I think I, I think I did pretty well. So I think I've got, I think I've got some good picks for tonight. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Just a ton of sketches to get through. Uh, and I can't wait to hear your picks. Uh, and finally we got the man TJ Kringle up in here. TJ, how you doing, man? I'm feeling blessed, black, highly favored. I'm feeling the holiday spirit. I got my Santa hat. If you're watching this on video, I got my rum chata. And I have maybe not as much history with SNL as Bill Kenny, but I absolutely have the American stubbornness to defend what I believe is right and something that I find is my favorite. So I'm happy to be here and ready to defend my perspectives, even if I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I haven't alluded to this yet, but it is going to get competitive tonight. Uh, we are we have all come to the table with uh, our favorite uh, SNL holiday, Christmas, Hanukkah sketches. By the way, happy Hanukkah to my fellow members of the tribe out there. Uh, but really quickly, before we get into the episode, I do want to plug the last couple of shows that we've been doing on SNL Network. Uh, last week, we had our By the Numbers show with the stats guru, Mike Murray. Great show, so definitely check that one out. And also, we had a second edition of our SNL stories with former cast member Dean Edwards. TJ, you were on that episode. Do you want to you know, tell the listeners a little bit about that great interview you guys did? I, I thought it was a fantastic interview. I would love to get a chance to talk to Dean again. Um, he really, I, I was most fascinated by hearing him talk about uh, some of the other behind the scenes people, not just like some of the cast that he got to work with. Um, and uh, I just, I really found that conversation very interesting. Um, I don't know, man, I, just, I, just, I just thought it was really fly, and I was just happy to be there, honestly. I had to remember that, like, oh, wait, like, brother, you're here. I got I got to, you know, got, got to talk to him a little bit. It was just awesome having and being in that conversation. Uh, yeah, really awesome that you got to interview uh, Dean, and uh, yeah, like I said, definitely uh, check that out if you guys haven't gotten the chance to yet. But tonight on the Super Fan Takeover uh, we are talking our favorite Christmas and holiday sketches of all time. Uh, and the categories that we have for you tonight, kind of similar to our, our Halloween episode that we did recently. If you haven't had a chance to check that one out, uh, definitely do so. But the, uh, the categories that we have tonight are best sketch, best commercial parody, best song, and best hidden gem. Uh, so, you know, hidden gem is something that, you know, maybe you're not seeing on those uh, yearly, you know, SNL compilations that NBC puts together of the best Christmas sketches. We've got the deep cuts here because we've got the super fans here tonight uh, to uh, show you guys what you should be listening to or be watching. So uh, let's start with the first category of best sketch. Um, best sketch. Um, we are going to start with Bill. Do you want to tell us your pick? Yeah, sure. Uh, this was a very difficult category because there are literally hundreds of uh, holiday sketches over the years. 
even though you'd never know it by the specials they run where they run the same five or 10 every single year now. Um, but I'm not going back too far with this one. Uh, it's pretty much from the last golden era of the show. Um, it was the second season for uh, a couple of our favorites on the super fans, uh, Kristen Wiig and Jason Sudeikis. And uh, it's two a-holes and the nativity. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, you know, that it, they 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 were just kind of coming into their own. They had done this um, one time before, I believe, at least for holidays. They had done the Jack Black uh, with Christmas trees, which was funny. But this took it to a classic level. Um, they're on their phones coming in. Uh, Jason's got his old school Bluetooth in his ear, and and they're talking very loudly and rudely. And it turns out they're talking to each other. Um, and then a as all these a hole sketches go, uh, they have no idea what's going on, but they're still polite in their a-holy way. Um, they're supposed to be Mary and Joseph and uh, Annette Benning tries really hard to get them into place and, and they can't get them over there. Um, and the fun, one of the funniest parts of the sketch is, is there's a live donkey in the sketch who Jason starts talking to and, and, you know, wants to know who's in there. Is it little kids? Is it midgets? Sorry, little people. Um, and then at the end, he, he walks away and tells them, you know, great working with you guys. You know, you, you guys are stand up dudes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's just so much great stuff, escalation in this that we always look for. Um, and then of course there's the line with, uh, frankincense and myrrh and they don't know what myrrh is. And he goes, what the hell's myrrh? The what? <laughs> myrrh. The what? <laughs> and it just, I, everything about this sketch is fantastic. Uh, Kristen and, and Sudeikis at their absolute best and they work so well together. Um, so that's my pick, a whole nativity sketch. Very good. Yeah, a lot of nativity sketches uh, on SNL over, year, over the years as a uh, tried and true uh, premise to place any sort of recurring character in. Uh, great pick, Bill. Uh, I, I do want to turn it over to the panel. Do you guys have any thoughts on the two a-holes Christmas sketch? That's a strong pick. Oh, that's a strong pick. All right. Okay, you, you, come, you came out here to fight. I see, Bill. Okay. <laughs> I love... The two assholes, all of them, uh, Jason Sudeikis and Krista Wig, like you said, you know, are just two all time great SNL cast members. And, uh, you know, they've they've paired together plenty, but uh, this is a really special pairing. And, uh, you know, all of these all of these asshole skits are so good. And Kristen Wig's uh, character really gets me every time. So uh, to, you know, to see them uh, grace us for a holiday episode. Uh, absolute blast. Great pick. Um I also, you know, so we are going to be voting, you know, on the on the on the sketches. You know, Sammy said things are going to get a little competitive here. So in a way, since we're voting, you know, we're kind of going for the, you know, the best in each of these categories. This is we haven't called it a draft, but it's kind of a de facto draft, you know, because people pull okay, stuff okay. off and then it's not there. and We're going to have to grab our own things. Uh, so uh, I, I do think that's a that's a strong pick. And uh, looking forward to hear what everyone else has to say. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, Hans, like I said, compet you know, uh, it's going to get competitive tonight. Um, and, you know, I do think there's still a ton of fun sketches on the board here. And let's turn it over to TJ. Um, and TJ, let's hear your pick um, for best sketch. Okay. So I, had, I only had like a couple that like really like stuck out for me as a sketch. Um, and if, if I'm going to be honest, I'm going to go with, uh, a classic for the past 20 years, um, but a specific performance with the Muppets, uh, the, I wish it was Christmas today. Um, I mean, they're, they're a little, nice little bundle of series, but, um, with Jimmy Fallon, Horatio, Catan and Tracy, uh, adding so much value and enthusiasm. Um, but just like that little minute and a half of them singing, I wish it was Christmas today. I feel like it imbues really great holiday spirit. It's not the strongest funny thing. Like it's really just like my new things, dinosaur sounds, Catan turning his head. If you watch them in a like sequence, you see Tracy just getting more and more apathetic. It's just, it, I, don't, I don't, I think that's on purpose, but it's, it's a little three line, three line to watch them. Um, it's, it, it's not, it's not necessarily even the funniest thing. It's more just, it is, it was for a while for some people, it, it did symbolize it's Christmas time. 
And so I just think that's really fly. So like kind of that collection, but they did one with the Muppets with Horatio, I think in 2004. Um, and I love Muppets. I'm a sucker for them. If you can't see, I have a Kermit like right above um, oh, yeah. there. So anytime you do Muppets, like I'm, I mean, Muppets and Christmas, come on, come on now. I thought it was pretty fly. Let me just, let me just toss this out there. Uh, but TJ, as a fan of, Christmas and Muppets. I I do own both uh, a Muppet Christmas Carol and a, Mu- a Muppet Christmas, where they have to defend the theater when it's ge- when it's going to be taken away by Joan Cusack. So so I love both those movies. I actually rewatch them every year. A Muppet oh, Christmas nice. Carol and uh, and and the the Mu- a Merry Muppet Christmas. I think is the other one. So great pick. I uh, I think we should just turn this into a Muppets pod for the rest of uh, the episode. But uh, I would no, love t- that t- so t- much. <laughs> Uh, we're not going to do that though. We're going to stay on topic with SNL, but Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, that's a great pick. They obviously did a bunch of those. Um, you know, I wish it was Christmas today, uh, sketches over the years. I think they've even done it on Fallon, uh, on the tonight show or late night a couple times as well. Uh, so yeah, definitely imbues that Christmas spirit. Um, Bill or Haynes, do you guys have uh, anything you want to add to this one? I, I will do you one better on the Muppets. I, I own the John Denver and the Muppets from 1979, both the VHS and the record. So I go back a long way with the Muppets. Wow. So I, I can appreciate yeah. that. But wow. no, they, I mean, I, I think there was diminishing returns as anything where they don't change anything about the sketches. But when they did the Muppets one and Horatio was just so sad because everybody else had left the show mm-hmm. um, and, and to have the Muppets fill in, it was fantastic. Yeah, that, that's And the song sticks with you no matter what you try to do. So yeah, it's a great pick. Let it be clear that even though I said, you know, we're going to stay on topic, I am also a fan <laughs> of the Muppets. just want to make that clear that no, no, no Muppets slander on the Don't want to be the only anti-Muppet uh, on the no, board. No, no yeah. Muppets slander. No <laughs> Muppets slander on the pod. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, uh, it, it is, uh, that is an interesting note, Bill, that you said about how, like, you know, there's a point where a lot of the cast had left the show, and in this iteration, you know, they did with the Muppets. This is almost like the uh, the boyhood of uh, SNL Christmas sketches, where you they get older every time they bring this one out of the, uh, uh, off the shelf. Um, so... You know, but uh, I noticed not not that not that interesting of a point. But anyways, uh, thank thank you, TJ, for bringing this one uh, to the table. Uh, all right, cool. Haynes, do you want to jump in here and talk about your um, best sketch? Oh, you bet I do. Um, there are there were so many. Um, I, I you know I've really come down to two i think that kind of tied for me so this was very 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 hard to choose um and i don't want to mention the one that i'm gonna treat as 1b because it might be your pick so I'll, we'll see it we'll see if it gets there uh but you know I, I thought about the impact that a sketch has the you know the way it gets into the zeitgeist the way people treat it and react afterwards so obviously that's not a context that I could have felt, you know, back I was born in 1984. So, you know, there's only certain aspects of SNL that I get to experience, you know, in the real world after the show out and about. But I've said on the show many times, you know, when I was getting into SNL, uh, I was about 13 or 14 years old. And so uh, that year, um, I believe this was season 24 We had just an all-time great Christmas sketch that you will see on all the Christmas rerun specials, and they have to put it there because it is is that good. It stars two of my favorites. Uh, They were people that were obviously on the show when I was getting into it. Molly Shannon and Anna Gasteyer. I've talked about how much I love both those women, and so to have them on their little uh npr show and invite alec baldwin out for sweaty balls i i have to take this pick i mean you got christian mccaffrey out there before he gets hurt you got to take that guy you know and uh so sweaty balls is my pick this just had so many great stupid jokes obviously uh, it's well really it's just one joke over and over except that you can do so much with the word balls uh you know it's kind of like when uh, you know when when you know with the Tom Brady thing when he was you know uh 
letting the air out of the balls. There were just so many jokes. You can just make so many jokes with the word balls. So we get Alec Baldwin coming on and immediately, bring, you know, he asks if he can bring out his balls. And they're saying things like, oh, my mouth's watering for your balls. And, uh, and Molly Shannon's going, oh, it's been years since I've seen balls. And, uh, and they're just making so many, uh, obviously, you know, sex-based jokes. Uh, but I remember talking about this on the school bus. I remember, you know, making making fun of it and laughing about it with all my friends um, when it came out. And obviously, it has become a worldwide favorite um, as far as SNL goes. So uh, I, I just think when I think about the impact that a sketch has, I mean, there's a reason that we're always going to see it on those Christmas specials over and over again. Um, and maybe you just didn't make ball jokes that often on TV back then. I don't know, but this, but, uh, but people seem to really enjoy it. And I still think it's an all time classic, obviously. So sweaty balls is my pick for the best Christmas slash holiday sketch. Uh, yeah, really good pick Haynes. I mean, this is like, like you said, this is like the, Really the first classic that we're talking about, right? I mean, this mm-hmm. is one that really kind of permeated, you know, we, we talk a lot about on the show about sketches that kind of, you know, there's the sketches that SNL fans really like. And, you know, we all talk about and can reference that maybe, you know, people outside of our little community might not get. But this is one that totally, you know, transcended. This is almost like a, a, a gateway sketch to being an SNL fan. I mean, this is definitely mm-hmm. one that, you know, growing up before I was a real fan of the show, you know, probably around the holiday season, you know, this the special would come on. And this would always be in the rotation. And that gets you to, you know, uh, become an SNL fan because it's just so iconic. So many great lines. Uh, but I want to take up all the oxygen here. Uh, Bill, TJ, do you guys have any thoughts on the uh, sweaty balls? Well, this this is a master class in uh, how to make a recurring sketch better. Uh, they probably done, I, I don't know exactly how many, they had done the NBR sketch at least three mm-hmm. or four times before this. And it was always some random person sitting next to them. And, you know, but this, when this came on and I watched this live and I mean, it, it was rare to hear the word balls on TV, even on SNL in 1997. <laughs> um, it, it was, it was incredible. And it, it just made you lose your minds that they were going to keep taking it to the next level and none of them break and none of them, they all stay in that monotone voice and that very, you know, NPR like voice and never break character. Um, and that's why it's still around. And it's probably the oldest sketch on the regular SNL uh, holiday special mm-hmm. at this point. So yeah, great pick. Man, this is, that's a classic. I don't even, want to talk about my my sketch anymore like that's that's such a great pick honestly sweaty balls is one of my earliest snl memories from when i was i want to say i was like a maybe i was in like coming out of high school or like just getting into college and the vague memory that i have of seeing it was why isn't anyone talking about this because like you know when you're watching comedy sometimes like it's just you you're really enjoying it and it's like why, why are more people talking? This is amazing. Like, right. I was like, this is incredible. And I, I just remember being just I, laughing my grass off because I thought it was so funny. And I just, man, that's, ooh, that's iconic. That's, I mean, I, to be honest, that's probably, that's probably more Nicole's word, honestly. But uh, it's, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's a great pick. It's just really funny. Okay, yeah. That, that no, definitely, yeah. No, uh, seems, seems like, uh, we're all a big fan of this pick, so this might this might be good for you, Haynes. Uh, but cool, yeah, we can move on uh, from this one to my pick. Gonna be honest, guys, I'm I'm pretty in between two here because one of yours might have been mine. Not gonna say which, um, but I guess I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna shout out one first because I feel like it's not gonna come up in the other categories. But the the the, the Vogel check sketches, you know, they've done them for so many holidays. I mean, that one is is great, and I, I do definitely want to just shout that one out. But the reason why I'm not picking it is because, you know, they all just – there's not one to me that really stands out. They all are very much, you know, kind of mesh in your brain. And, you know, Paul Rudd's in a lot of them, so it's like, you know, w- which one is which. But those are always great. I'm going to shout out this one that – or for, for my pick – uh, this is one that might border on Hidden Gem, but honestly, on those Christmas 
specials. There's, you know, there's only so many like really iconic Christmas monologues that they can throw into that monologue slot. And I think this one, um, to me, hands down, I remember watching this one live and this is, uh, uh, right when I started getting into the show. And I don't even think I was that familiar with the actor doing the monologue at the time, but has since become one of my favorite character actors. John Malkovich reads Twas the Night Before ah. Christmas. That's my pick. Um, oh, that's, know, that's all my, that was on my list. Yeah, if you guys are not familiar with this one, definitely seek it out. Um, it's basically, you know, John Malkovich, um, you know, when he hosted, I think back in like 2008, you know, for his monologue, he kind of sits down, you know, they, they bring in like a whole set of like, you know, a fake like, you know, fire pit and kind of like a living room set up. And they bring, I think, some actual like child actors in to like listen to him tell like the, you know, the night before Christmas story and throughout his monologue. And he I don't know how long the was the night before Christmas story is. I think he reads the whole thing. But throughout it, he's kind of just like poking, like not even like poking fun or poking holes at the actual story, but just saying like very random funny one-liners in the way that like only someone like a John Malkovich or like I, I bet like Chris Christopher Walken could, could have probably done like a monologue like this mm-hmm. to great success but some of the the really good lines um that he had in the special and again like this is like a monologue so he's not you know t- he's not interacting with the cast or anything like that it's really just like him and like the camera and like the child actors but not really interacting with them but um <laughs> Uh, one of the lines he had was, uh, hope, hope is something that we cling on when reality gives us nothing else. Um, he talks about like the physics that would be involved with Santa and right. his reindeer, you know, <laughs> delivering all the presents on one night and that he was it's burst a scientific flame. fact. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't going to try to uh, dish out my uh, my Malkovich impression. I didn't have enough practice. Uh, uh <laughs> But then the, the one that really killed me was like, when I was a child, we used to suck on pennies and it was a delight. Uh, <laughs> was so funny. In- incredible lines. Um, and it does kind of make me think of this season of SNL where they've really just kind of gone back to letting the host kind of take complete control. Um, and this is like a prime example of having just like a great host, you know, deliver great stuff to get you into that Christmas holiday spirit. So uh, what do you guys think of this monologue? I love this. Um, it, I had it as number three on my list. So I, I, yeah, I, I rank things tightly, you know, because I didn't know where my, you know, picks might get nabbed. But uh, I had this as number three on my list. I absolutely love it. Um, and it is f- it, because it's full of all these very, dr- you know, it's kind of like a Christmas John Malkovich version of Debbie Downer. You know, where she just brings in these like true facts or he brings in these true facts, you know, that are just like crushing people's dreams while they're trying to live in the moment and have fun. Uh, It is very funny. I absolutely love this. And um, so actually it was right behind my 1B that I and the reason I went with sweaty balls is just because the gravity of it. It was seemed so iconic and impactful. But as far as. I, you guys may know that I really love impressions and anything that's rotating impressions in and out. Man, the uh, your rat bastard Charlie Brown was my one B. I really, I really kind of wanted to almost make that my number one sketch. Um, but maybe, uh, maybe maybe put a pin in that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So loved uh, loved this pick though. Great pick. Yeah, I mean, this, this. I had kind of the same experience with Malkovich uh, when he hosted in uh, 89, I believe, and uh, had no idea who this guy was, but he was so dry and so, and, and same as you, Sammy, like he has since become one of these people I look to for, uh, you know, movie roles and things like that. And he's fantastic in Space Force with Steve Carell. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, this, this was, and the way he interacts with these kids and, you know, something else we're seeing this season that we haven't seen in a long time with bringing these child actors back and it was so great to have all these kids and whether they were really good actors or actually genuinely scared of him it worked because they just stared at him like who the hell is this guy (laughs) and when do i get to leave this stage but yeah this was this was a great pick that's not yeah that's method acting for sure i mean if you're uh (laughs) you're a little kid on stage with john malkovich you've definitely not seen him in any movies and you're just like who is this guy uh, TJ, did you want to chime in here? 
Yeah, it's definitely the bewilderment on the kids' faces, like, in the camera just choosing to, like, constantly come back to them. I also just kind of love somebody who just chooses to take a look at their monologue and just be like, can we just get to work now? Can we just can we just start like now? Like I'd take that as him just getting started with the sketches, like when Drake got did like the Hanukkah sketch when he hosted. Um, like I just take that as like we're just getting into this like right now. Um, and also just so I dry wit is sometimes it's hit or miss for me, but I love dark humor. So asking a question about like actually I, I don't want to like highlight. It's just more. Asking the question about like the rates of like uh, people, maybe not, maybe people voluntarily leaving this earth during Christmas time, and then cutting immediately to the face of, a, of like of, a, of an innocent child. It's just like oh my gosh. Um, so it's just more like the shock of it for me is just kind of like fun that they're just like ah let's just let's just try this. Um, so I thought it was fun. Not it wouldn't have been like my first pick, but because I really thought you were going somewhere else with that, Sammy. I like I ooh, I was wrong. I really thought you were going for the Drake Hanukkah sketch because that was like on my list. Um, because it was the only other monologue into a sketch. I was like, what else could he be going with this? So all right, I was wrong. Also, also a good pick, but uh yeah, I mean it sounds like it's unanimous for mine, but no, okay. So let's uh go into the the, the <laughs> voting process here. TJ, sorry to make you uh, yeah, I was drinking. A drink there. <laughs> I, took, I took a gulp. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, nah, you, you can't. That's, that's dangerous uh, on the show. Uh, so we're gonna start uh, with the voting now. You know, definitely or basically the rule. The rules of the voting are you can't vote for your own sketch, and if it does get to a scenario where we have a tie or whatever, um, then we'll have our, our our mystery judge weigh in. Um, and he'll, he'll send me a text back when I tell him what the options are. So let's start with Bill. Uh, what sketch would you vote for? I'm going to go with those firm, sweaty balls. God. Like, I say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, and, man. And, and, and those, and the, those on, balls man. are quite tender, right? Uh, TJ, what is your vote? All right, we're just gonna alienate every female listener. Um, no, uh, yeah, I mean, is this even a contest? It's Shorty Balls. I mean, come on, man, it's not. It's a wrap. Uh, I mean, hands. It's. Uh, I feel like we know where this is going. But if you had to vote <laughs> for a sketch that wasn't Shorty Balls, you know, what would your vote be? Um, what were the other ones? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I, I should, as a as a host, I should have read them all out first before the vote. Uh, I'm I'm really That's on my good game point. Now. Yeah, the no no no, 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 no. No, this is good. We're learning we're learning lessons for lay for the later categories. This is our this is our dry run. Uh, so the sketches were Bill picked the two a holes nativity sketch. All oh, right, right, right. Um, TJ picked uh, I wish it was Christmas today, specifically the Muppets edition. Uh, Haynes, just to remind you, you picked sweaty balls, <laughs> and I picked the John Malkovich um, oh, monologue right, yeah. twice the night before Christmas. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I, I really did. Those really did like just go in one ear and out the other, even though we just talked about them. Um, yeah, I mean, I would have to. I'm serious. I'm completely serious. I don't know why. I just blanked so hard. Um, so I really, well, yeah, I mean, I'd have to vote for John Malkovich. It was number three on my list. Yeah, so um, I would vote for John Malkovich since I can't vote for the Schweddies. Uh, and, you know, I, I could be that guy that like votes for something, but no, I'm, I'm voting for Schweddy Balls. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, you know, is a Christmas classic, uh, you know, just like a classic sketch in general, not just like a classic Great. holiday sketch. So, yes, um, yes, let's, yeah. uh, let's put it on the board. If I had a graphic, I would put it up just <laughs> sweaty balls on the screen, but I don't have any graphics. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> bring it up? So, that, so that is the winner of our best sketch category is sweaty balls. So we are moving on to the next category, uh, which is best commercial parody um tj if you're ready i'm gonna start yes, with you what is your i am pick? so ready i have i have the pick this is this is the pick okay and none of you are expecting this pick none of you have this all right the pick is it's a more recent pick all right it's from a scarlett johansson hosted episode all right it is the macy's uh sketch which is specifically about buying clothes for Macy's to fit your kids in. Um, and in this <laughs> sketch, uh, it's just a bunch of clips of the SNL cast as parents having difficulty with the kids wearing the clothes. 
And we have it at one of my personal favorite things, which is Mikey and Heidi as a toxic couple. Anytime <laughs> Heidi gets to play yes. this dramatic, like toxic, like <laughs> wife, it is she kills it every single time. There's a line in it where uh, Mikey said <laughs> they're trying to figure out how to tie the kid's shoes, and she's like instructing him, like, "Oh, you just got to do this," and he's just like, "Well, why don't you just do it then?" And he turns to the kid and <laughs> says to the child's face, "Daddy's a dumbass." This set <laughs> kill it. It I I have to I had to be resuscitated after I watched the sketch because it kills me. And I think one of the other perfect things that um some of my female homies like to put out to me when I watch the sketch that I really enjoy is um where there's a little girl and Kate McKinnon is like walking her out of the house and the little girl mm-hmm. uh, says my shoes hurt and Kate McKinnon says welcome to being a woman and I was like wow I think that hit home for some people <laughs> um so I think it's a strong pick uh it makes me laugh so much and it's it's very reasonable it's like december 2019 but i love this sketch this commercial so much nice uh so yeah so you picked the macy's sketch with uh scarlett johansson i uh, do want to give a shout out to scarlett johansson i mean one of the the uh best i don't think uh, she's in the sketch I don't think she's in the pre-tape oh. when I rewatched it. I, I'm pretty sure not, she's I'm not, not. going to. Uh, I, I rescind it. Rescind, rescind the shout out. Get me honest. <laughs> this is one. This is one that, uh, as I was going through the the playlist of of holiday sketches, I don't think I got to, but I do remember it airing um, when you know the episode aired uh, like two years back. But uh, still, good pick. Uh, Haynes or Bill? Uh, do either of you want to chime in on this one? I, I I love this sketch. It is, uh, you know. It's very funny, and the funniest part is uh, Heidi and Mikey as the toxic couple. I don't remember <laughs> what she she says, uh, like, or you know, like maybe we don't just won't do Christmas at all. And he says something like, "Oh, you mean your brother won't get drunk and ask for money again?" Or something. It's just like <laughs> it's it's full of so it, it's just they, that those characters are written so well with just such like deep-seated you know hatred for each other even though they're forced so to be good. life partners um yeah it's a real it, it really hits the nail on the head for a lot of uh a lot of tough uh, situations out there and uh you're right so T- tj you you really i think hit on the most salient points that uh, that line that kate delivers she delivers with such <laughs> it's it's such a it's such an honest disdain, you know, like she, like, she, like, like, like someone almost said that to her or she had that, you know, exact, of course she had that, you know, exact same feeling probably as a little kid. Um, so this is a really good one. Yeah. I enjoy this one a lot. It's a good pick. Yeah. It's very fun. It cracks me up. It kills me. Yeah. I, I don't have much to add to the, uh, that, but uh, as far as recent pre-tapes go, it's, it's definitely up there. Uh, this was a great season, if I recall for pre-tapes and uh you know, they, they've gotten so realistic with these commercials now with, you know, using the, the proper logos and, and, you know, and, and tapping into this angst that we all have over the holidays um, for various reasons. Um, th- this was a great, great pick. Uh, definitely. Yeah. A ton of good options uh, to choose from here. So I'm excited to see what uh, the rest of you guys have picked. So moving on over to uh, my man, Haynes. Haynes, what commercial um parody did you pick so this was a pretty tough one for me and i I guess they they all kind of were um but because there's just so much content you know there's so much content uh for these for these holiday shows so my top two also were both uh pretty recent um and i mean i guess this is the moment of truth so i really have to decide now Ooh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I'll, I know, I feel like someone's going to pick the other one. So I'll just go ahead and say the one that maybe is a little bit less likely. I really love the Christmas commercial for Dunkin' Donuts from the episode where uh, Casey Affleck hosts. (laughs) On Um, my list. Literally. It's so good. I was like number three. So good. Uh, you know, it starts out innocent enough with uh, with like eighty and 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 Heidi, you know, talking about they you know stop and I think eighty's a you know postal carrier or something, and then you know Alex Moff, it's like, you know, I can always get my you know coffee here or something with us, and he's got a big smile and he's wearing his nice uh, you know his nice jacket, and then uh, and then they get over to to Casey Affleck and uh, and he's just everything. 
that you imagine like Boston trash to be. <laughs> and uh, so he is, you know, he's hitting on just like all these stereotypes of this, just like unlikable, like, you know, over masculinized kind of, you know, he's just very juvenile, but he does these things that like only idiot males do. And, um, you know, he, he tries to bring, he tries to bring Mikey in, you know, he's trying to put him on camera and, uh, and Mikey's like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to be on camera. He's like, come on, come on. Don't get, tell him, tell him how you like those, uh, those vanilla nut taps, the what, the, the, the nut taps and smacks him and hits him in the balls and just this idiotic stuff that um, is so funny that, uh, you know, I think a lot of us have imagined, um, you know, this type of character to be. And so uh, we get a lot of great lines from him. You know, the this the bit with him standing, holding the cigarette outside the door. So uh, so Bobby Moynihan, like the store manager, and comes over and he's saying, you can't smoke inside. You know you can't smoke inside. And he's going, I'm not smoking inside. I got the, the cigarettes outside. I'm not smoking inside. Yeah, but it's coming in. And uh, it's just, this is a, yeah, this is, this is a top-notch sketch uh, for me. And um, everyone in it is great. So um, yeah, that, I don't, I, I don't know that I could pick one much better than this. Although I do have a tight one B. I have a tight one B. Won't mention it, but uh, but this one I, I really enjoyed a lot. Lots of uh, lots of Boston accents, which Casey Affleck can do pretty well. Um, so it was very fun. Yeah, definitely, Haynes. Great, uh, great pick there. Uh, the Dunkin' Donuts sketch. Uh, I do want to like ask you a, a quick like follow up question. You know, obviously this is like the best holiday sketch episode of the super fan takeover when i was looking back on like all these sketches this is one where i'm like oh yeah this is like kind of this is a holiday sketch i guess in my mind it's like always been like definitely like the wintry vibes you know but i kind of forget it's like you know christmas themed what do you think it makes this like a good holiday sketch are there any sort of you know emotions or feelings that come out of it that kind of resonate with you well, I don't think that it makes me feel particularly attached to the holidays. I just think that it qualified because they paint it as like, you know, come to Duncan for the Christmas season. That's like the way that commercial is kind of set up. Um, so I thought that was good enough, Sammy. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, was, I was trying to like really like just pull, pull, out, pull a fast one on you. And really, yeah. you know, it's supposed to be competitive here. We, we got to get true, the fire true, going. True, so, true, true. Uh, you know, I wanted to just just uh, put a little pressure on you. But you know, I just love the line. I just love the lines about that. These are not holiday related. But, you know, he's like, yeah, regular schedule. Come in and get a Corolla coffee and uh, three parliaments and then take a dump. That's pretty much the schedule. And then uh, – <laughs> And then he and then he gets a you know you, and they say something about like and now you can get you know Dunkin' Donuts coupons on your phone and he's like oh I got it I hit the big one and he sh and he shows he shows his phone to the he shows his phone to the camera and it's so cracked in a million pieces um, and that got a really hard laugh out of me I don't know why so um, yeah, yeah just 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 love the sketch though no definitely definitely qualifies just want to make it clear um, qualifies as a holiday sketch Bill or TJ uh, do you guys have anything to add on this one. I mean, as somebody with a cracked phone, I mean, I'm and who used to have a podcast with trash in the name. Uh, I think I definitely qualify as like this type of trash person, just not as Boston. This actually is on my list. And it's you're right. It's not very Christmassy. And I, I definitely like teetered like on it. I just kind of went in it because SNL always does like two or three shows in December. And there's always a ton of Christmas decorations. So but like this was in there for me. Oddly enough, only because I only thought I only remember this sketch, though, uh, back when Burr hosted, when Burr mm -hmm. hosted and they did a, like somebody told me that, like, oh, this is like a follow up. And I was like, what? And I went back and watched the Casey Affleck and didn't even remember that sketch until now. And like those two, uh, like where like Mikey is just playing the son. And the, mm -hmm. I just it it kills me like I because I love like, because Burr, you know, he's not he's not that guy anymore. But I love that like cartoonish version of mm -hmm. the guy that Burr is supposed to represent. So for me, like it, just diving into that stereotype is when it's like you know just being very silly, kind of a parody of itself is is very funny to me. Yeah, you you never go wrong with these uh, regional uh, like murder dirter last year. <laughs> uh, you know, fi okay. finding something that only like one tenth of the country actually understands but who the hell cares uh how th this alone should have gotten casey another uh hosting gig on the show mm -hmm. um yeah th this was a great mm -hmm. one and uh, no. my wife being from the uh main 
New Hampshire, Massachusetts area, it really hit home with her. So yeah, this, this was, this was a good one for sure. I'm going to disagree with you strong there, Bill. I don't think this is a case for Casey to come back. Who's gone is, I don't know who the hell Casey Affleck is. I know he's Ben Affleck's <laughs> sure. brother. I know he's, <laughs> I know he's like a handsome white actor, but this was a case for Mikey to come back and do the sketch <laughs> again, which he did with Bill Burr. So I don't need the, I don't no, I don't I don't need to see Casey Affleck again. I mean, no hate, but I don't know who he is. Except I know that he's hosted SNL. That's it. Can you, you know you know his brother though, right? Uh, he's Batman. Of course, I know who Ben Affleck is. <laughs> and he did that Jimmy uh, Kimmel song. Also, he, yeah. also an Oscar winner, but yeah, nobody knows who he is. Uh, all right, cool. So next, uh, next uh, up, we got Bill. Bill, do you want to show off your best commercial parody pick? Uh, Haynes made reference to it earlier for a different category. Um, it's a commercial for the hottest Broadway show. <laughs> um, I am also a sucker for impressions galore. Um, so I am going with you're a rat bastard, Charlie Brown. This was everything you could ask for impressions and more. Uh, you know, you've got Bill Hader as Al Pacino as Charlie Brown. The fact that it goes three deep is hilarious. Uh, Sudeikis as uh, Phyllis Seymour Hoffman as Pigpen and on and on and on. And Martin Short as Larry David, who does a killer Larry David. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's just talking about a, a, a modernization of the Charlie Brown Christmas special. and uh, But as told by Al Pacino and... <laughs> There's so many fantastic lines, you know, like Christmas is coming, but I'm not happy. And then he gets in fights with Linus about eggnog. I'm out of eggnog. You're out of eggnog. <laughs> but the, the best line in this to me, I, it's such a silly line, but half the time that's what we love, right? When Lucy uh, as well as Kate, as Edie Falco, as Lucy pulls the football away, he calls her a bitch. Calm the <laughs> F down. It's just grass. It's soft. <laughs> There's something about the way that Kate delivers that line as E.D. Falco just kills me every time. Doesn't matter how many times I, and I watched it like 20 times this weekend. So um, this, this is my pick. Uh, you're a rat bastard, Charlie Brown. Uh, really good pick. Um, I, I will say about this one. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, uh, everyone knows if you've been a listener of the show for a while, that the, the impression sort of vehicle sketches um, I'm a huge fan of, cause I, I, I love, um, you know, a great celebrity impression. And this is one that like, yeah, I, it's like such a, the way you put it, Bill, it's like, it's like threefold. It's like you have, you know, an SNL cast member impersonating a celebrity impersonating one of the peanuts. So that is such a, a, a cool sort of like inception sort of mind bendy way of putting a, a spin on like, you know, the typical kind of impression sketch. And like all the impressions are like great. Like, there, there's not really like one that's like, oh, that's bad. There might be some that's like the celebrity I'm like not as in tune with, but they're all like very good impressions. Uh, I'm watching Sopranos right now for the first time, and that Edie Falco oh, nice. rewatching that yeah. like kill, killed me. But um, TJ or Haynes, you guys have any thoughts on uh, your rat bastard Charlie Brown? I'm a little upset because um, when I was like thinking of like what I wanted to come back to before I started like doing review, doing review for the show. That sketch came up in my head, but for some reason, because I hadn't seen it in a couple of years, I remembered it as like a Thanksgiving sketch. So I was like, oh, it probably is like, it probably doesn't qualify. And I am kicking myself that I did not rewatch that sketch. Oh, that's such a great pick. Oh my, to be honest, I also like, I just got done. I mean, I know there's a new season right now, but about sometime a little after the summer, I just got done finally after like four years watching all of Curb Your Enthusiasm because I've been watching it like on and off. So like I love Larry David and just like I, I, I'm very new to Larry David. I've only come to him in the past few years because I've never watched Seinfeld. But like so anytime there's like a Larry David like cameo or impression or something, I really get a big kick out of it. There was an um, I think there was like a, a Fallon episode, a Fallon hosted episode where Larry David was in it as Bernie. I think, and he's like in the end credits as I'm like watching it, and I'm like, oh yeah, like I for like so Larry David, anything just like absolutely like it warms my heart. Well, not warms my heart, it just makes me know that there's cynicism in the world, which makes me what warms my heart. Right. Yeah. Anyways, it's cool. It's a good pick. Absolutely, absolutely love this pick. Um, 
you know, to your point, TJ, I also suck up anything with Larry David. So a good Larry David impression is fantastic. Martin Short is, you know, a genius. Um, by the way, I really think that Only Murders in the Building is, I, I it might be the best show to come out in the last year and there's been a lot of good ones and i but it's it's really up there as far as fun watches um absolutely love this pick obviously bill since i i had it on my list as as maybe my number two um and you know like you said sammy actually the very first thing that i was gonna say uh as far as impressions go was uh kate mckinnon as Edie falco which especially because you know i haven't seen you know Nurse, whatever, or I really that that Edie Falco is also also Nurse in. Jackie. Yeah, I get to Nurse Jackie, right? So, um, so she's been in several things that I haven't seen. All I know her from is The Sopranos, and her first line is something like, "You're moping around the holidays. It's not right." <laughs> it's just like so. It's just it's <laughs> that's so Carmela, and uh, so I really fantastic, fantastic sketch, and uh, obviously love. Uh, you know, uh, seeing seeing Martin Short, you know, yell uh, and be angry. No, f you. You know, uh, so absolutely fantastic. Um, everyone is good in this. Uh, Nassim Pedrad as Kristen Chenoweth is pretty funny. Y'all having yourselves a nice little Christmas, y'all, or something. And her her whole thing is funny. So there, everyone is fantastic in this. Uh, you know, obviously, obviously, Bill Hader as is Al Pacino as. Uh, Al Pacino's Charlie Brown. I want something to take me higher. And, uh, you know, the whole thing is just fantastic. Yeah, so I absolutely love it. Great pick. I Yeah, amazing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one last note. I mean, Bill Hader as Al Pacino, he was almost my pick for our Mount uh, Impressmore uh, episode. I think I ended up going with his uh, Clint Eastwood impression. But, yeah, his Al Pacino is, is, is great. His Al Pacino as Charlie Brown, even better somehow. Um all right, cool. So I guess we are going to move on to my pick. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy with this pick. I'm going to be honest. I, I was scrambling a little bit uh, there just because a couple couple things got taken. But I, I think I feel good about this one still. It is like very recent. I think it actually is from last season. Um, it is uh, from the Timothy Chalamet hosted episode the december to remember car commercial ah. uh you've seen we've seen you know beck bennett play b- both beck bennett and heidi gardner play these type of characters like all the time you know but um this is just like a very like prime example of beck bennett playing like the dopey dad who you know it's like one of those commercials where it's like oh the husband surprises his wife with like a brand new lexus and like, you know, for the first couple seconds of the commercial, everything seems great, like a regular car commercial. And then uh, Heidi Gardner's like, did you pop, did you buy a car without asking me? And like, it just has this great back and forth between Beck um, and and uh, Heidi, where Beck's like, oh, babe, it was only like four thousand dollars down zero AP or zero APR, like not even knowing like, what <laughs> APR is. <laughs> And she's like, and he's like, how much is the, the monthly payment? And he's like, huh? <laughs> and just like a lot of great things. Timothy Chalamet in the sketch doesn't have a ton to do, but like, you know, Heidi says something along the lines of like, we can't afford this. And he's like, we can't <laughs> like, it has like the, the genuine sort of um, thing where when your parents are dealing with money, you don't know like what's going on. Like there's like real like pathos to it. Uh, Monkey Day comes in as a neighbor who like lent, some money to Beck um, a while ago. And I think the, the, the line of it uh, in the sketch that really gets me, I, I might be misquoting it. It's just like, Hey, it's Christmas. This is good. There's something like that. <laughs> just really trying to like sell his family on this, like, you know, terrible decision he made. Um, so yeah, that's my pick. The December to remember Lexus commercial sketch. Do you guys have any thoughts on this one? I mean, it was, it was the one you know, when we started this category, I said my two picks are very recent, but I'll go with the one that I think is less likely to be picked. So that was I went with Duncan, but December to remember was was my my one B for this. And and I it still might really be, you know, just a two way tie. It's classic escalation. And um, I think the thing I think the thing that Timothy Chalamet reacts to that he didn't know about is um, is she's like, your father hasn't worked since March. And, uh, <laughs> and he's like, you haven't, he didn't know he's his father's out of a job. And he goes, 
well, you know, COVID's been hard on everyone. And she said, you lost your job in March of 2019. This has nothing to do with COVID. And, uh, so it's got so many great lines. Yeah, he, you know, she's like, did you think this car cost $4,000? And he's just kind of like, oh, uh, yeah. And then, uh, so, you know, just, just it's just line after line. Everyone's great. He he's like come on it's christmas he pulls out and pops a beer and they're like it's nine o'clock in the morning he's like i don't have a job (laughs) (laughs) so it's just line after line after line and uh and when mikey comes over yeah he's like he's like he's like you bought a lexus he's like you were three weeks ago you were begging me for money you said you couldn't pay for presents for your kids um you know and uh and he's like i'm sorry uh, you know, I'm out of work. Your, your mom's sleeping with everybody in the neighborhood. You are, mom? You know, and, and then, of course, at the end of the sketch, Mikey Day's like, nice to see you, Carol. <laughs> so, yeah, line after line after line after line after line. Um, this hits on all cylinders. It never it never loses the momentum. I mean, to me, this is really as good as any SNL sketch gets. Um, this is just gold standard stuff for me. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's so relatable. And if you played this 20 years from now, maybe the numbers wouldn't add up as well. But uh, and and maybe people will have forgotten COVID, but not according to South Park, at least. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's something you can replay and people will understand it because no one has ever bought a car at Christmas for their significant other. And yet <laughs> there are thousands of commercials every single year for that said purpose. Um, so yeah, th- this was great. As you said, Sammy, I mean, Heidi and Beck playing their respective roles the way they always do. Um, and that's why we miss Beck. <laughs> so yeah, great pick. Yeah. I mean, you guys touched on like all like the notes that like I was thinking this was also, before I even started taking notes and doing like thinking about what I wanted to to like check out, this was I had like four or five sketches or things off the top of my head that I was like, this is stuff I want to revisit that I automatically know for myself I enjoy, but these guys know SNL too, so I I can't just have these because these are pretty good. And this was like like the fifth thought that I had of just like something really great. And again, we come back. Well, Heidi's not playing toxic in this one. She's just she's so great at playing like like hilariously dramatic i'm not that it's not even that it's just because i guess she's the straight she's the straight uh person in the sketch but like is she just her reactions are so great and mikey's little look at the end just mm-hmm. i i think it just it's chef's kiss it just it's beautiful uh definitely so cool so those are our commercial parody picks uh i am gonna recap them uh so tj picked the Macy's sketch from the Scarlett Johansson hosted episode. Uh, Haynes picked the Duncan donut sketch. Uh, Bill picked the you're a rat bastard, Charlie Brown sketch. And I picked the uh, December to remember Lexus commercial parody. Uh, so I'm going to start with Haynes on this one. Uh, besides your, your own pick, what would you throw your vote towards? This is so tough. This is so tough, you know, because, t- you know, two of them were I had right at the as as some of my favorites, you know, t- really tying kind of for first place. So this is really, really, really tough. Um, but because I think, you know, at part of the root of my interest in comedy has always been impressions. I will go with your rap bastard, Charlie Brown. Uh, Bill? This is tough, even though I can't vote for my own. Um, I'm going to say December to remember, uh, just because it's it's so relatable. TJ? You know, I'm also going to say December to remember, because it was one of my, like, freshest memories. All right. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter unless I've... Well, oh, it does matter, because I, I do want to vote for uh the you're a rat bastard charlie brown sketch so we are tied up. So oh, we, tie we will here. we will return back with the results later in the show from our mysterious judge um <laughs> on what the winner will be between you're a rat bastard charlie brown and the lexus uh december to remember sketch two really great picks but uh for now we're gonna move on to best song uh so the best song uh, you know, related sketch. Um, you know, like we said earlier, there's been a lot of great Christmas 
holiday theme uh, songs on the show over the years. So I think we're going to dive into some pretty great ones now. Uh, let's start off with Haynes. What is your pick for this category? No, TJ's got to go because there's only four categories. Oh. So we should each go first in one category. Oh, did, did you? Or you, to... you. You were. I th- yeah. So... I think I went first. I think Wait, I went you went first? first? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just yeah. went first? Oh, you did. I thought. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. he... I thought. Okay. You're right. I, 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 I did my okay, job good. pretty well. Yeah. 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 yeah no, no, no. You're doing great. You're just, you're just doing great. What's on second? I don't know. But know that I know that I'm always searching for equity in everything we do. Thank you. Okay. So who's on first? Keeping me pure. Who's on so first? So I'm on first. Who's on first? Yeah. So, um, okay. No, like who, so, who's... yeah, it's me. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. We know the bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I am so lucky to get to go first with this category because this was the one that I really thought if, if I don't go first with this song category, there's no chance on god's green earth that someone else doesn't take it first like absolutely first there's a lot of great holiday songs okay a lot i've got a lot of them lined up here on this spreadsheet there's and many of them have been so impactful but there is one that i think stands just on its own and you know when i talked about sweaty balls i talked about the impact I talked about the way it felt out there in the world. And I talked about, you know, kids doing it on the bus on the way to school. And so this is uh, from that. This is from that similar time era. And honestly, not only is every line of the song, not quite every line, but most of the lines are packed with pretty good jokes. A lot of really good ones. Some that'll make you laugh out loud. But it's just it's a catchy song and it's a, it's a feel good song. It is a feel good song. And so I have to choose what I think is just the king of all SNL holiday tunes. Adam Sandler's Hanukkah song, of course, performed on uh, weekend update. And there's a lot, there's a lot of good ones that I want to talk about, but of course I won't get into it since I'm going first. But to me, this is as good as it gets. Um, <laughs> you know, we, 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 you know, there's the line about, um, uh, it, just so many good lines, you know, about putting uh, Paul Newman and and uh, Goldie Hawn together, and because they're each half Jewish, and oh, what a fine looking Jew! And, uh, and uh, of course, you know, talking about I don't, you know, I don't think Tom Cruise is Jewish, but I hear his agent is, and he's got like all these little jokes. And then, uh, of course, maybe the funniest one, he paused with a little, the, the nice little pause. He goes, O.J. Simpson stops playing. Not a Jew, <laughs> and so, so there's just so many, so many good lines in this, and it is, uh, and it is really like you know, it's a catchy, fun song, and it's it's kind of heartwarming, you know, the way he says, you know, just just talking about, you know, for all the you know Jewish kids who just you know felt like they were kind of missing out when everyone has a Christmas tree in their house or something, and let's all sing this together, and it just felt very warm and comforting, and. Like I said, I mean, we used to sing this on the bus, you know, like we used to sing it on the bus. We loved this song. Um, this was this is one of my earliest memories of, you know, living out the SNL experience in the world around me and sharing it with others. And uh, so that's why I picked uh, Adam Sandler's Hanukkah song. It's as good as it gets. Uh, really good pick. I uh, really thought you guys were going to let me have this one just because I <laughs> celebrate. Uh, but uh, <laughs> no, uh, great pick. I mean, iconic Spawn sequel songs. You know, that there's a part two, part three. Uh, it might be a part four. I'm not sure, if that, but I, there's at least three. And you can argue it spawned the, uh, one of the only Hanukkah movies, Eight Crazy Nights um it's kind of the 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 impetus for for uh for that movie so um yeah really good point uh really good pick um this is one of the um you know songs that's on rotation you know every every hanukkah you know there it's it's up there with actual hanukkah songs that people have been singing for two three hundred years so um yeah pretty pretty great pick there uh bill and tj uh do you guys have any thoughts on the hanukkah song yeah, I mean, uh, this this was one and one B for me. Um, I, I picked Sandler on the on our Halloween uh, podcast, and if we had a Thanksgiving, I I would have picked him. So, um, <laughs> I had a couple other choices just because I didn't want to seem like too much of a Sandlerite. But uh, 
Yeah, this was this was uh, amazing at the time because other than Hanukkah Harry, I don't know that SNL had ever touched on Hanukkah at all. Um, so to have the most iconic person in the cast at that time come out and do this song that uh, people who were underrepresented on the show, you know, g get a chance to hear this incredible song and this funny song um, and to have it last 25 years and still be something that people really enjoy. Um, it's one of the classics of all time. Um, I mean, in addition to Hanukkah Harry, Hanukkah Harry, I'm also going to shout out Drake for doing the Hanukkah sketch in his monologue. Uh, just got to, you know, shout him out for the Hanukkah representation, too. Um, you know what's funny? Well, it's not funny. I didn't know what this was when I was younger. I was actually introduced to this via um, Adam Sandler used to, oh, you guys would know this, but this is something I didn't know because I had no friends who knew what these were. But when I was like 15, 16, my best friend's dad had a couple of Adam Sandler like comedy albums. And at the time, I was the only person that I knew that was listening to either comedy albums or was listening to comedy music albums. And there was one, it was uh, Adam Sandler's Stan and Judy's Kid. And I remember listening to it. And it was one of, at the time, it was like the filthiest thing I'd ever listened to. Mm -hmm. And honestly, to this day, it's still one of my like favorite um, comedy albums. But I remember hearing, I want to say a rendition of it on there. And I was like, what is this? This is like, it was that when I was like exploring some of Adam's like, other albums, but that was my introduction to the fact that like, oh, this was something that he like regularly does. And then, oh, he did this on SNL. I had no idea because I hadn't watched SNL at that point yet. I'd only come to, I'd only known Adam Sandler through the movies and through, through this. So for me, it like kind of getting to it a different way always felt like a little fun and also like insanely nerdy because like I've not... This is the first. This, I, this is like me the third time I've been able to talk about Stan and Judy's kid. Like it, it just felt like something that you know no one else really knew what it was. Um, so it feels kind of really. Um, I don't know. It, it's I think it's a great pick, but it, it's so interesting that like, I I knew about this through a different avenue than you guys might have come across it. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, really good pick. Uh, their hands. Uh, I mean. I almost want to just stop this one and just call it the winner, but we have to move on to the rest of the panelists here. Um, and we're going to start with Bill. Uh, Bill, what is your pick for uh, this category? Um, like Kane's alluded to, there are so many good choices, um, and it's hard after you have this, this iconic song like he just picked. Um, but I kept coming back to this as my other song, um, and there's very little comedy in it. Um, but it's something that was in SNL specials uh, up until a couple of years ago. And it's the OG song of, of Christmas on SNL. It's uh, Garrett Morris singing Winter Wonderland with the entire original mm -hmm. cast and Candace Bergen. Um, it's, it's still, it's done so well. And to watch, you know, these young versions of Chevy and John and Danny and uh, Jane and Gilda and uh, Lorraine and Candace singing along. Uh, it's one of the few, it's probably the first highlight that uh, Garrett had on the show. It was season one. And uh, one of the very few highlights he had in his whole five years, really. Um, he, anytime he was asked to sing, he did a great job. But this was his iconic moment, and uh, he kills it. And uh, I still love listening to it just uh, at Christmas, not, not just because watching SNL. Uh, great, great pick there, Bill. Uh, bringing it back to the original cast, uh, which is which is great. Uh, Haynes, TJ, do you guys have any thoughts on this one? I mean, I'm just a fan of any like atypical Christmas songs that aren't you know uh, Mariah Carey. Like they're all all the Christmas songs are just Mariah Carey. But it's <laughs> any song outside of that, I uh, I enjoy getting a chance to like listen to. So for me, I think it's pretty chill. Honestly, wait, sorry, I, I'm speaking so casually. I think it's a good pick. But also, Bill always, Bill always gets those, like, out of nowhere historical picks, man. It's because I'm old, TJ. That's why, that's why we have him on the show. We have it's, him wisdom. On it's wisdom. It's wisdom. It's wisdom. Uh, yeah, this, 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 this is a great pick. And, uh, you know, Candace Bergen hosted um, a couple Christmas episodes, at least. 
And uh, so, you know, so this was a very cool time. And um, when we get into hidden gems, we might be even getting back into uh, some of this territory. Uh, so we'll see. So, and you're right, Garrett Morris was always a great singer um, when he had the chance. Uh, so this is a really fun pick. Speaking of Candace, I, I have, since we are SNL, formerly SNL Stats, I have a, a trivia question for you guys. There were only three hosts that ever host, hosted multiple Christmas episodes. Haynes just alluded to one. Who are the other two? Jimmy Fallon. Mm-hmm. Boom. But I don't know what the third one is. Are, are, we, are we counting an upcoming nope. host? No. no. Okay. I, I was going to say Paul Rudd, but I guess not. Yeah. Um, it's more obvious than you think. Steve Martin? No. Nope. Eddie Murphy. It is not. Oh! Oh! Wow! wow. Phil, filled, in, filled in for Nick Nolte in season eight when he was still a cast right. member. Yeah. Came right. back for season yeah. ten and then season forty-five. So wow, it's crazy. Yeah. When I was looking back at it, I figured I was going to see a lot of different hosts that came back time after time. Only three. Right. Good job. Jimmy Fallon, that, my that, favorite that is, Christmas host. That's uh, no, that's good. Good trivia. We we still got SNL stats in the DNA. That's that is for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool, TJ. Let's uh, let's hear uh, what you got as your pick for this category. All right. To be honest, this is this is actually a little difficult for me um, because like I really only threw out. I wish it was Christmas today because I wanted Bill to think I knew about uh, stuff earlier than 2010. <laughs> um, but now that I have I have satisfied that, I'm of course go with something that's a little. It's actually it's not super recent. And I don't necessarily know, I don't, not that I don't know, because I, I definitely watched it. I don't remember if it was our first iteration of this, but there was something that happened where we came into this amazing era, um, you know, in this past decade of these dope as hell women on SNL, uh, like Cecily, 80, mm-hmm. um, Kate, like just so many fly, like females on the show. And this was a kind of a staple we got for a few years in the 2010s mm-hmm. where the girls would get together and they would sing us a song, but the songs, these weren't like romantic songs. These were songs right. about something only they themselves could really like present to us. And it was, it was in a season where one of my, <laughs> it was in a season where um, if anyone remembers the name, Noel Wells, this was her season, mm-hmm. not her season, but um, people probably know her more from master of none nowadays, but uh, I'm going to mm-hmm. shout out. Let's do it on my twin bed. Um, Great. because anytime 80 says it's your little baby 80, I am mm-hmm. there. I'm here <laughs> for this sketch. I'm, I'm immediately ready to laugh. And it's also a, um, it's a Jimmy Fallon hosted episode and he raps. I'm not saying that's my favorite part, but Jimmy Fallon, this was for me. I was a big fan of Jimmy Fallon in his late night era, uh, because I was also in college and he kind of like hit that sweet spot like that was i was the perfect target demo for that so like whenever he hosted i was excited and he was doing the christmas show and whenever jimmy would come back and host he would pull out all the stops he'd ask all his friends to come back and so the cast was always on their a game in these episodes at least for me they're some of my favorites so let's do it on my twin bed there's something about <laughs> there's something about thinking back to college experience and having to sleep in a, t- a twin bed and then listening to this song and just absolutely laughing my ass off and thinking about uh family friendly activities uh in that bed just so ridiculous um i just i also think it's a good bop too um there's a great beat about like uh two-thirds into the song where they kind of break it down and they show kid photos of like um of the Mm -hmm. the six women performing (laughs) and it's just really fun like uh i i i this sketch is really fun it makes me laugh um i also really enjoy when people pun out point out the minutia of like the annoying things about like being an adult and then having to go back to that like childhood space like dealing with your parents as you're like now an adult or like dealing with you know like your hometown uh so like that like kind of like series of songs i really love but i really enjoyed this one because it's definitely like a a christmas um one that they got to do uh yeah no this one was definitely on my list as well um, you know, a great parody of the the kind of pussycat dolls. I think specifically it's uh, Buttons because in that song, Snoop Dogg comes in and I think Jimmy Fallon's kind of playing that kind of, you know, rap verse role. Uh, am, I, am I wrong on this? Um, but uh, Haynes and Bill, do you guys have any thoughts on this one? I, I love this one. I, I, I had it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I 
it was in it was a contender. I had it just a little bit further down my list, and uh, I also love you know all of these songs where the girls come out and rap. Um, I love the one where I think it is the one where they're home for Thanksgiving, like and uh, Cecily back, has back home baller. Yes, back home baller, like when oh, Cecily's right. on the on the couch and she says something like, "I think that my mama needs help in the kitchen." But if she thinks I'm moving, then that bitch be tripping or something. <laughs> so like, I love that. Um, I love all of these. Yeah. So, um, uh, so this was absolutely uh, one that I considered, and it's full of great lines. Um, and the pictures are hilarious. That picture of eighty when she's about ten or so, like leaning, doing the oh my god. And I have it's one. It's so just, cute. I really it's like so, it. It's so funny, but it's relatable because I have one just like it with the white background, and it was the one where like we were getting only once did my parents let me do pictures where like you paid extra and you could like have like little props and do stuff like that. And so uh, mine is also from when I'm 10 years old and it was 1995. So it was the year the Panthers came out. So I got like a Panthers hat and like the football and stuff. And uh, so I was that, I was that idiot too, 80. It's okay. And um, the, uh, but, I, but this is full of great jokes, you know, the cat puking on the bag and, and just like having the creepy dolls in the room and um, all the stuff that, you know, comes along with trying to hook up with a girl in her childhood bedroom. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is I'll awesome. take a pass. <laughs> I'll take a <laughs> huge pass. I mean, Greta, it's, it was also just the, the twit, like, when, just, like, the things you suffer through to, like, interact, and also, like, a mm. twin bed. Like, now I, I've evolved. A twin bed is no longer sufficient for me, who I am as an adult. For so me alone. Funny, but... <laughs> you know, much less with another person. <laughs> It's just like I think if you dated someone now and they had a twin bed, if they're over the age of twenty six, this is fascinating. But we're we're getting we're getting a, we're getting a, a little, 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 yeah, little, little sorry, weeks sorry. here. Yeah, yeah. Before sorry, before yeah. before we move on from the sketch, Bill, do you have anything to add? Uh, oh, <laughs> sorry, to I, 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 <laughs> this was definitely up there for me as well. Uh, it's it's relatable not for the twin bed part but when we uh when we go up to Maine to, no hold on hold on to go up to, to see my uh my wife's parents we stay in her old bedroom and i mean even though it's now you know a gym slash office slash you know starbucks uh you know it, it's it's got that weird vibe of like okay well this is where my wife was a child like this is crazy so i can re we relate it when this came out this was something we definitely both laughed about uh, uh, on our ventures to Maine. Um, but yeah, there, there's so many good parts. And and the underrated Noel Wells, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. This this was a great time in the show with these six incredible women. Great pick. For sure, yeah. I mean, yeah, and this song, as we've alluded to before, definitely a bop. Um, absolutely. So, absolutely a bop. So, very good pick there, TJ. Uh, really quickly, I'm going to um, talk about my pick um, this is a sketch that we have talked about in depth on a previous uh, episode of the Superfan Takeover, and it's a sketch that we all know and love and is ingrained in the culture, so um, we don't need to go too detailed into Dick in a Box. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a, I'm actually surprised you guys left me with this one. Um, it was because... the obvious pick. It was my, it was my 1B. It was my 1B. My Your 1B, yeah. The... If I had a time machine, um, but no, the, uh, I mean, this is arguably the best digital short of all time. I don't remember. Um, I, I don't remember if this won our, uh, best uh, digital short episode, but it was definitely in the top up there. three, definitely, yeah, definitely top three or top the, five. The, no, it's no, a, come on. Now. Come uh, on. It's a discussion for another time, but you know, yeah. the way that, uh, the music just kind of gets you into that you know, kind of holiday uh, spirit uh, and the chemistry between Andy Samberg and Justin Timberlake uh, in these sketches. Uh, to me, if I had to pick a pairing between Timberlake and uh, Samberg and Timberlake and, and Fallon, go with Samberg. That's that's just me. Um, might, might, be, might be controversial, but yeah, to me, this is just a, a classic holiday sketch that kind of speaks for itself, but would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this one if you if you have any. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I can remember every time I, I hear this, I love that they leave the audience reaction and the original audience reaction mm -hmm. because people did not know this was coming. And uh, 
I remember there there was a lot of talk whether it was dick in a box or cock in a box um, at first, but then you know when, when it was put up online, we all figured what what they were saying. Um, this is classic, and and how could you not love? I mean, we talked about it on the Lonely Island podcast. The uh, you know Maya and uh, Kristen are so great with these guys as well. Uh, when when he starts rubbing the feather in her face, I mean, kills me every time. But yeah, I mean, th- this is this is your holiday chestnut for sure. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it, this is just low hanging fruit. Um, you, you, I mean, literally, I was thinking about it like, oh, like I wonder if there's any Lonely Island Christmas stuff. And I thought it and I was like, there's literally no point in me looking at this because someone is going to say it. Um, so I didn't even bother. It's a great pick. Anytime I hear, I don't know what instrument it is, but it's the opening um, instrument. The hmm, Like there's like this, whatever that opening interest, instrument instrument is before there's the first spoken line. It's just so sm- like honestly, if like if you did a Silk Sonic parody now, like it would be Dick in a Box, like just all that flavor. Like there's a lot of flavor in that song, you know. Uh, so I mean, what what else is there to say? Yeah, I mean, this is it. it you know, I think this is this generation's Hanukkah song. Like that's the level of impact it had. And you're right. It like it could possibly be the greatest, you know, uh, digital short of all time. Like it really isn't that good. Nope. It, I, I know, I know TJ disagrees, but I, when I, I, you know, a lot of my judgment here, um, is based on impact. And I really feel like the mm. impact of this song was just so huge. And, um, you know, and I've talked That's a lot right. about experience and this is one of those things that people couldn't stop talking about. You know, um, it seemed like they really pushed a boundary with this. I mean, people have said dick on TV before plenty, but uh, but especially for like, you know, it's not prime time because it's airing at 1130 at night. But like it's a very well watched mainstream show. And now we're, you know, you're not showing it, but there's a penis in that box. <laughs> and like, so, so, so it's I mean, it's it, it was it was a wild thing. And, uh, and and people talked a lot about it. And I just think of the impact that this had and the legacy of digital shorts uh, is built on the back of Dick in a Box. So it's a great pick. Can I please ask any listener out there to have <laughs> just some kind of cliff? of Haynes saying there's a penis in that box that what, <laughs> do you did you know do you pay attention to what you just did that was gold that was beautiful <laughs> that's uh you know I, I i had a good line there i was gonna quote super bad when you're saying it how it's, it's on the back of the digital shorts shorts i was gonna be like the, the funny thing about my back is because it's located on my i'm not gonna finish uh but uh no uh cool so <laughs> But we're, we're getting off the rails here. Uh, so, yeah, here those are. are our picks for the best uh, song-related sketches. Just to uh, to refresh your guys' memory at home, uh, the sketches are the, the Winter Wonderland sketch with the original cast, the Hanukkah song, Do It In My Twin Bed, and Dick in a Box. Uh, let's start with TJ on this one. I have a feeling you're not going to vote for Dick in a Box just because uh, you're slandering it over here. But uh, what, what, is your, not- I, I, what, what, what is your vote? <laughs> Don't 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 put don't put words in my mouth. I'm not slandering that incredible song. I'm just saying, and Haynes is right, biggest impact, but I don't think it's the best digital short. So, so what's, just what's, your, what's, your, what's your what's your vote for this category? My vote it, it is dick in a box. That's that's the vote. It's what more is <laughs> yeah. there to say? I I stand, I stand corrected. Uh, I apologize as well. Uh, Haynes, mm-hmm. what is your what is your vote? I mean, we, you know, we can't vote for ourselves. It's obviously dick in a box. <laughs> Uh, Bill, this is really tough. Uh, I'm gonna go with Dick in a Box as well. And let the record show, I would have voted for the Hanukkah song, but it doesn't matter because Dick in the Box. My vote just doesn't matter. Uh, Dick in the Box is our winner for the best song related s- sketch. Um, I-, I think it's an awesome pick. Um, all right, finally, our final category here um, is our favorite, our best hidden gem sketch. Um, so this is one, you know, that maybe people don't know a lot about. So you know, we're looking for deep cuts here. Um, as TJ would say, we're not going for the low hanging fruit. We, we need the, the highest <laughs> hanging of, of fruit. Um, so let's, let's start off with uh, Bill for this one. 
This is really, this may have been tougher than the other ones because there's so many things as I'm rewatching 47 years worth of Christmas episodes uh, that have been completely forgotten by the public. Um, this isn't going to get picked by anybody and it's not even uh, my pick, but I, I, with Norm's passing earlier this year, I, I recommend you go back. Season 23, he does this quick thing at the end of the episode. It's on Peacock where he does Burt Reynolds Christmas, which is not as good as his stuff on Jeopardy, but it's really, really funny. So to, to kind of pay tribute to Norm. But um, I'm going to go with, uh, it's from the first season that I watched live, um, season 12. Um, this was one of the best episodes of the season. It had uh, Star Trek convention, which is very famous. Um but this was the Christmas episode with William Shatner, and uh, they did uh, the lost ending to It's a Wonderful Life. And uh, Dana Carvey brings out his incredible impression of Jimmy Stewart. And I mean, they get every beat in this right. They have the, the, the concerned look on Jan Hook's face as Donna Reed, and they bring in Uncle, Uncle Billy uh, as Phil Hartman, and, and they all do this great thing. And anybody who's ever seen this movie, which, you know, used to run 25 times a, a season um you know it ends on this happy note and but it never really resolves what happened to the evil mr potter and uh you know they uncle billy walks into the room and says you know we found out that potter stole the money so they all go over to mr potter's and beat the hell out of him <laughs> so you, you've got jan hooks and, and dana carvey and dennis miller in a rare sketch appearance uh, just kicking the hell out of John Lovitz as uh, Mr. Potter. And uh, then they all break into old Lang Syne to, uh, you know, put a nice bow on it. But this this was incredible at the time. And it's still very, very funny if you're a fan of this movie and uh, great impressions all around as well. So it's a wonderful life. Lost ending. Uh, this sketch is great. And I bet it would hit even harder for me if I had seen that's a wonderful life. But maybe this season, maybe this holiday season, I'll give it a watch. Uh, TJ or Haynes, do you guys have any thoughts on the lost ending uh, sketch? I, I also have not seen It's Just a Wonderful Life. Um, you know, so I, I'm, I'm with you, Sammy. You know, um, I, I, but to be honest, I think this is a, a solid pick. But, you know, n no notes. <laughs> It's a, it's a well. I'll I'll throw some notes out here. So this so this this is a this is this is a fun pick. And uh, yeah, anytime we get to see Dana Carvey's Jimmy Stewart, <laughs> that is very fun. And um, I uh, have seen It's a Wonderful Life probably four hundred times, and I've never watched it once. I have no idea what happens in this movie. It's always on in the background during holiday gatherings. Like the family's watching it. We're supposed to be, someone's paying attention. I'm sure I'm eating pie. We're chatting. There's coffee. <laughs> I've never, you know, I don't know what's going on. I really honestly don't know what happens in the movie. I know there's a scene where like a little kid gets slapped around or something by an old man in a, in a drugstore or something. And that's the only thing I remember. Um, and uh yeah, no, it's got Toby Stewart. In it. But yeah, seriously, my family watches. It's on all the time at, at our Christmas gatherings. I seriously, I don't know the story of it at all. Um, we need to do a live watch with the SNL crew of this movie. I mean, I need to educate you people. Come on, it could be for the it, Patreon. It could be there. For you the go. Patreon. Do a mystery science theater. That that is yeah. that is pay yeah. that is paywall level content uh, <laughs> yeah. for for the folks at home. We'll have to talk yeah. to John after this. Uh, but any, cool, but cool. anytime we get to see all those, all those folks, like you mentioned, you know, absolutely so fun. Definitely. I mean, great, great cast. Um, obviously a classic uh, holiday sketch. Uh, moving on to TJ. TJ, what is your hidden gem that you'd like to share with uh, the folks at home? Okay, so hidden gem, I misinterpreted it. I thought it meant something that you know damn well no one else would pick rather than something you thought no one else had seen. So, I don't want. I don't want to do. It. I'm betraying my my pick one A. I'm gonna betray it. It's one of my favorites. It's my first one I think of, but I'm gonna betray it and highlight something far more recent. All right, to like a to two years. Oh my gosh, it's been two years. Um, two years ago to the electric, incredible, powerful Eddie Murphy hosted show that we got. In 2019, not all. No, no one can say that this episode wasn't crackling with energy. 
And yes, Eddie may not have been on his like absolute A game, but it was so incredible to see and to be there. All right. A lot of great things in the show. This this episode was a Christmas episode. And also because I love anytime a black person hosts, because that means I'm going to get more black focus sketches. I love it. And a little thing that, you know, plenty of us know, but I know damn well none of you are going to say is that this episode, the musical guest was the fantastic Lizzo. So this is my wild card because I know it's something no one would ever pick. And that's okay. My pick is Lizzo's performance of Good as Hell, mm. uh, which is the, her second, her, it was her second performance because she changes some of the instrumental to add in like uh, sleigh bells and like Christmas sounds. And like, because that song is a great song, it's a hit. But like, I love the Christmas, like, you, I love the Christmas version, Christmas edit of that song. You have like a dancers dressed as gifts, and we don't talk enough about musical guests on SNL stats, and they deserve a lot of love too, except for Taylor Swift. Um, but like, I thought this for me because of the electric energy of that show, and like Lizzo came in here and killed it. That like I was on a Christmas high coming out of this episode. Like all that energy combined with her doing this amazing performance, those incredible vocals, this was Christmassy AF to me. So for me, that is my wild card choice. Is Lizzo's good as hell Christmas performance? I thought it was electric. Okay, let me just say first and foremost, we 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 need to remember that we're you know not not everyone's watching this on video. This is a podcast. We should have all heard our reactions to that hate on Taylor Swift. That should have been out loud from all three of us. <laughs> should have been going, oh, oh my god. People and need to know it? how people people need to know how we were reacting when when when, when someone says something like that. It, um, not that, not I, that I, I'm like a, I, I was speech I was speechless. The mute, the mute that, oh, uh, spoke for really herself. that's uh, that's your reaction is talking about Taylor Swift. Don't disrespect Lizzo, that black. Oh, I'm like not disrespecting. I love Lizzo. Something about and Taylor was, right now. Love Lizzo, love Lizzo, and that was an aw- and and she was awesome in both those performances. Absolutely loved this episode, loved everything about it. Like you said, it was exploding with energy. I watched it live with my family because um, we did have our uh, our family gatherings like kind of used to be on Christmas. This one for that year for some reason was on that Saturday, and uh, so I had a bunch of cousins. Like we we're all staying at uh, at my mom's house, and uh, and we stayed up and watched this together. And you know, of course. Chris Rock and and Dave Chappelle are coming out on stage, you know, at, during the monologue. And this was an absolutely thrilling episode. Absolutely loved everything about it. So this is a uh, this is definitely a deep cut hidden gem pick. I would not have thought of this, but th- but her performances were absolutely fantastic. And um, I will actually go back and rewatch this now that you've reminded me of I didn't remember like the sleigh bells and stuff. So it just sounds like a nice, uh, a nice holiday watch. I'll go warm myself by the Lizzo fire. It's a great question, and let me clarify for because I sw- I know there's a lot of Swifties that are on this podcast and that listen to the show. So let me clarify. I, I, so, I don't know if we have to re- reopen that. But... <laughs> no, 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 no. Taylor Swift, one of my favorite SNL hosts, as an art, she has some good hits. Uh, but like as a musical performance, like I don't know, man. This isn't the Jonathan Majors episode. She doesn't need to take up more space. Yeah, I said it. I said it. What's up? What's up? <laughs> well, it. you know, we 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 are gonna move on to Bill. Bill, have any thoughts on the <laughs> on the Lizzo performance, or or should we move on? <laughs> I, I like Katy Perry. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> right, no, the, this. Gonna... The... The, the musical that, that's a great choice and you're right i mean to to look at the music of snl the, the problem is i think a lot of times the musical guest even on the christmas episode does not do christmas themes so the fact that lizzo mm-hmm. leaned into that, that that's a great great point and uh i love that yeah yeah no i mean this was just like an iconic episode in general to, to steal nicole's word again and uh this performance uh when they announced this pairing like the eddie murphy lizzo episode i'm like this is this is just like put put that on a t-shirt and and i'd buy it like that's like that's like good stuff and a great performance that met the hype as well uh cool great pick uh from tj haynes what do you have for a hidden gem i actually am kind of debating between two that i am pretty positive are from the same episode and this is, I'm honestly having a hard time choosing because I think one's shorter and it's a little, 
it might be a little more straightforward with its funniness, but the other one is so weird and extended. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to pick the one that kind of gives me the 10 to one vibes. Um, so in season two, there is a sketch that starts out with uh, Garrett Morris singing O Tannenbaum, and it is called <laughs> The Killer Trees. And uh, apparently there's these trees that are out on the loose. They are murderers. And when you sing O Tannenbaum, uh, they come to life and then kill that person. And it's a really long sketch. Um, you know, it's probably like seven minutes or something. At least that's the way it felt. It felt like it went on for several minutes. Um, and it's, and it is, you know, it stars uh, really Candace Bergen um, and uh, John Belushi and Dan, John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd are detectives and they're trying to track down these uh, killer trees who are very smart as Aykroyd keeps bringing up, he said they're very smart, but they can be caught. But they they find their way into Christmas tree lots and they position themselves near the front where lazy people will get right out of their cars and want to pick them. And they're always evading police capture by constantly marking down their prices. And uh, and so these stupid Christmas trees um, are murdering people. And there's a there's just a, and and so it goes on and it um, it goes through a lot of inter- iterations. Um, you know, we're warned that tinsel and ornaments won't do. These things thirst for blood, and uh, and it's got a classic. It's got a classic Gilda doing a you know a really nice dumb classic Gilda character. Um, we actually you know when they when they do the tree lineup, um, there's two trees, and then the musical guest Frank Zappa is there as like on the lineup. So there's two trees and and a Frank Zappa like pretending as if they all three look alike. I'm not sure why because uh, Frank Zappa is not dressed up as a tree in this and. Um, and and they do a funny bit where you know they're saying Simon says, um, and he says Simon says kill the person next to you, and the, and the tree ends up killing Frank Zappa, and um, and they break the fourth wall at some point, uh, kind of because these trees, as they're going along and murdering people, obviously they're being operated by like a person. So at some point after they sacrifice Candace Berg- Bergen, they, they send her out there, you know, to sing O Tannenbaum, and uh, and they say we'll be right around the corner with our guns, you know, and then the tree kills her when she starts singing it and John Belushi pops in and says, we said we'd be right outside. We didn't say we'd do anything. <laughs> so he like sacrifice this woman. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then they're like, what are we going to do with this guy? And they pull out the, you know, the guy from behind the trees been operating it and like, ah, he's just an innocent stagehand. And uh, it's just, the whole thing is just, it's just, it hits on a lot of points and it's so wacky. And, and because it's a little, it felt like it ran a little bit long for normal sketch. Um, and it's just such a stupid idea. It kind of gives me 10 to one vibes. Um, so I think this is a really funny, fun, deep cut. If you're not aware of it, it is very strange and, um, enjoyable. And I actually kind of would like to make it a tradition. I hope I remember to go back and watch this every holiday season. Yeah. I mean, the category was hidden gem and honestly, uh, I, I have not seen this one yet. And so I'm gonna have to, you know, after that glowing, uh, breakdown of it i'm you know after we record we're, i'm definitely gonna put that one on uh bill or tj have you have you guys seen this one or have any thoughts on it uh i i, I haven't come across it it sounds hysterical like i'm really like trying to look it up right now actually i can't find it on youtube oh yeah i don't know have i seen this one <laughs> that this was this was my second choice just in case my first one got chosen are you serious I, for him yeah, absolutely absolutely wow, awesome. love this one to the hilt this i mean it was similar to all the land shark stuff they did you know especially with belushi and Aykroyd playing the cops mm-hmm. and the, you know don't know how to stop this um <laughs> but yeah the, the 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 best part of this to me was gilda who's singing something else which i can't recall right now and the tree's she's not moving and then La start singing a, maybe. <laughs> yeah 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 she's singing la cucaracha exactly tree doesn't move start singing otana bomb and it starts inching up on her and then she sings la cucaracha again and it <laughs> stops and it just goes on and on and like you said it's a very very long sketch as they were kind of want to do back then um but yeah the <laughs> This had all the the markings of like this pulp fictiony kind of thing that they would do back then with detective work and and uh, crazy sketches. So, absolutely fantastic pick. 
And, and just uh, for the record, I you know I knew you've seen this one, Bill. I just you know it was more more of a rhetor more of a rhetorical question, you know. But uh, all right, cool. Well, that's uh, a great pick, Haynes. Uh, let's. Uh, I guess I'm gonna close this one out with my pick. Uh, you know, I don't know if this one is necessarily a hidden gem because it is um, fairly recent. But I found this one to be a hidden gem to me because it was one that when I put it on, I, I kind of remembered it. But, it, you know, because of the type of sketch it was, which is a political holiday sketch, um, you know, around the kind of Trump era of the show, there's so many political sketches, especially during the 2016 election year, that this kind of got swallowed up in that sort of black hole of that era of the show that I like kind of forgot about it. Um, my pick is the Hillary Actually sketch, the Love Actually parody. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and oh, the thing yeah. I found super impressive about this one is there is like no dialogue in the sketch. It's parodying that one scene from Love Actually with the, um, you know, the, the messages on the cards and everything like that. And uh, the performance that Kate gives without uttering a single line of dialogue everything is in her face and the way she you know manipulates these cue cards and if you haven't seen the sketch it's basically um you know right before um trump was um basically right before the electoral college you know voted to you know validate the you know the election votes um and she is going to an elector's house played by cecily strong and you know it's recreating the scene from love actually where she's kind of basically saying like, you know, hi, I'm Hillary Rodham Clinton. And, you know, you, you may know me from my work and she's going through like all of the, the, the things that Hillary did in her career. And Cecily's kind of like, you know, wrap it up. And she's like throwing all the cue cards and you can kind of see like, you know, everything that Hillary would typically say, um, especially the, the Kate Hillary character. Um, so many great lines. Um, it, it's all like really visual humor but also good writing. It's like, it's kind of like an interesting mix of that. Cause like the, the one liners on the cue cards mixed with Kate's kind of facial reactions is, is such a, uh, a good meld. There's a part where she's like, ah, we'll never know how he won the election. And there's like one card that's just his cough. She throws it really quickly, <laughs> Russia cough. And like, it's just like really like impressive, like work from Kate. Um, so yeah, I, I found this one to be a hidden gem just because, like I said, yeah, in the grand scheme of these political sketches, and obviously, you know, Kate's played Hillary so many times, this is actually a solid, funny, political holiday sketch, um, which I found to be pretty, um, pretty good, and, you know, one that still kind of holds up for me, even, you know, five years removed from the election cycle, like some of the other you know, era of that show sketches don't necessarily hold up. So what do you guys think about this one? I just love the line um, <laughs> on the card where it just says, but bish, he cray. Like, that's it. Like, that's the thing. Because I just love when people say bish. I don't know. I just thought it was really funny. This, this, is, this is a classic, uh, really great holiday sketch. It's one that I enjoy thoroughly, and you're right, it's awesome uh, how Kate does this all basically through mime, and um, and she does do the uh, the same type of wave that that Hillary does, this like kind of um, you know cupping, uh, clasping wave, and um, and it is full of funny lines. The card's full of funny lines, and obviously you know Cecily does a good job um, with her reactions and too, but obviously Kate is the star of this. Um, this is a really really great holiday sketch there's no doubt about it it is truly a gem i don't know if it's hidden enough for me uh well it is hidden enough for me only because um i can't watch the trump era snls at this point <laughs> uh maybe in a couple more years so uh, i completely had forgotten about this one but you know looking back on it it was very cathartic you know, the hallelujah that she did the day, the week of the election mm -hmm. gets a lot of pub, but her doing this and kind of putting a little bit more comedy into it. And this is why Kate's one of the best um, being able to do this, even though this trope with love actually has been done by multiple shows in multiple ways. I think this was 
very, very well done and uh, something that uh, Kate can be proud of. By the way, see the guy, the guy that you know, I, I obviously knew the killer tree sketch. Thinks this might be a hidden gem, so I, you know, <laughs> I, the, I, am I am I qualify if I'm gonna just be competitive and defend my my choice here? Um, TJ, did you want to chime in real quick? Am I the only one that hasn't seen Love Actually? I I never knew where the cards thing came from. I just I've known it's been a thing. I didn't know it was from that movie. I haven't seen Love Actually. I just I, I haven't seen that. I, I've just seen it, as Bill said. I've seen a lot of people make fun of it, and so I yeah. Just, I, I maybe maybe I didn't know that it was called Love Actually, but I knew which movie, and I know I don't like I don't even know that guy's name, but I know that he's in other movies. Like I know who that guy is. That um, is and Gerard so, Butler, Hugh Grant. No, 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 no. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, 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 but I, I was just very familiar with the uh, with the part, yeah. But I've never seen Love Actually either. I think, for the record, it's uh, Andrew Lincoln from The Walking Dead is the guy in the in Wait. the Love Actually. What? The guy, uh, the guy it that was? plays I Rick thought Grimes. It was some, I thought it was someone else. I, I know who Andrew Lincoln is. is. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Again, haven't seen the movie, but I've seen this parodied many times. Over many, uh, you know, different various comedy things, uh, but yeah, that's my pick. I was right. It um, is Hugh Grant. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. Um, that's it? my was pick. It Hugh Grant? He's the lead. Is For... what it says. Yeah, maybe I, I he's the he's maybe he's the guy that <laughs> she cheats on though. She cheats Hold on. on. Yeah, watch this movie with the card guy, right? <laughs> Listen, none of us have seen Love Actually, and we gotta we gotta move on from this. <laughs> yeah, we we, uh, we gotta move on. Oh but uh, the uh, yeah, just let's recap these hidden gems, why don't we? Uh, the choices that we have here from Bill, uh, we have the lost ending to "It's a Wonderful Life." Uh, from TJ, we have Lizzo's performance uh, from the Christmas episode with Eddie Murphy. Uh, we have the Killer Tree sketch from Haynes and Hillary actually. For myself, uh, I'm going to start with Haynes on this one. Um, what would you vote for? I'm going with those classic early '90s impressions uh, or late '80s impressions of uh, and from "It's a Wonderful Life." Uh, TJ, uh, even though I haven't seen it, it's the one I want to watch the most. I'm going to go with the Killer Trees. Bill? Gotta go with Killer Trees. Uh, and you know what? I, same thought process as TJ. I mean, it's one that is very much a hidden gem. Um, so even though I haven't seen it, I really want to watch it. So I'm going to go with Killer Trees as well. Uh, so that is the winner uh, for Hidden Gems is, is the Killer Tree sketch. Um, and just to recap, and, and don't forget, we, we have the winner. We have the results in from the uh, best commercial parody sketch. I know everyone at home has been just waiting. Like, when are they going to – this episode's almost two hours. When are they going to, um, you know, say, the, say the, the results? So the four winners that we have for tonight for the best SNL holiday sketches, for best sketch, uh, Shweddy Balls, for best commercial parody – it was between a You're a Rat Bastard, Charlie Brown, and the Lexus December to Remember sketch. Um, to quote the, the our mis, our mysterious uh, our mystery judge, uh, I'm picking Your Rat Bastard, Charlie Brown. I might be biased, but it feels like more of a classic holiday sketch. And there's not enough time, you know, away from the December to Remember sketch to kind of immortalize it as a classic, which I, you know. I, I also understand. So your rat bastard Charlie Brown is the winner for best commercial parody. For best song, we have Dick in a Box. And for Hidden Gems, we have the Killer Trees sketch all the way back from season two. So uh, a lot of great holiday sketches and I, a lot more that we haven't even uh, weren't even able to discuss on the show. Um, so if you're sitting there at home watching the episode and you're like, I can't believe they didn't talk about this, please, you know, leave a comment on the video. Um, you know, find us on social media, you know, tweet at us, let us know like what your favorite holiday sketches are. It's, uh, you know, still early on in December here. So there's a lot of time to revisit um, some of these classic sketches. And I hope you guys had a lot of fun doing that with us tonight. 
Um, before I go around to uh, our panelists here, I do want to remind everybody at home um, that we have a lot of really fun shows uh, coming up this week. Uh, and be sure to check out our SNL Network social media on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok um, you know, to keep up with our weekly schedule. Uh, and make sure to join us for the for um, make sure to join us this Saturday night for our hot take show where we will be covering the Billie Eilish uh, double duty episode where she is hosting and she'll be the musical guest, um, which is really exciting. So definitely come back to YouTube to watch us talk about it live um, with some great guests. Um, awesome. Well, this was really fun. I'm going to go around to the panel and let you guys plug away. Uh, let's start with Bill Kenny. Bill, thanks for coming on the show. Do you got anything to plug? No, just follow me on Twitter or Instagram at BKLove73. Looking forward to a strong end of the uh, season for SNL for 2021. Absolutely. Uh, and then I'm going to go over to Haynes. Haynes, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Uh, feel free to plug anything if you got it. So thrilled to be here. Love talking about this stuff with you guys. Like we said, there was so much content to go through. So it was so much fun. Uh, people can always find me on Twitter at SNL has a cast and on Instagram at can Drew attitude. I am very excited about being on the hot take show for the Billie Eilish double duty. Those hot take shows are always so fun uh, right after the fact. So looking forward to that. Um, that's what I got. Uh, definitely. I, I didn't know you're going to be on that episode. So I'm very excited to hear your hot takes uh, on that one. And finally, TJ, TJ, thank you for stepping in the ring uh, for the super fan takeover. Uh, it was really fun to have you on as a guest. Um, where can the people find you? Uh, well, uh, thanks for having me. I was really glad to finally get a chance to do a super fan takeover. I, lots of honorable missions that we have, you know, uh, here and um, if you ever want to reach out to me uh, because you don't like my opinions about what I said about Taylor Swift, yeah. you can reach out to me at King Compliment on Instagram and TikTok. Um, and also, I have a podcast uh, called Rabbit Trail. That's R A B I D Trail. Um, it's a fifteen-ish minute podcast where we just talk about whatever we want. We just did an episode on live streaming, and next week we're doing an episode on uh, whether or not friends with benefits can work. Just a quick little Monday commuting podcast, commuting podcast, and you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at We Are Rabbit Trail. I'm I'm excited to hear you know whether or not it works, um, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, you guys can find me at that Sammy K on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I've made my triumphant return to TikTok. Had a bit of a hiatus there for um, a month or so, so definitely uh, come check me out there. And also, uh, you can always find me on these super fan takeovers. So if you have not gotten the chance to, um, you know, watch or listen to our last um, couple episodes, please go back and do so. Um, and yeah, just uh, hope you guys all have a great uh, holiday season. A happy Hanukkah to my fellow members of the tribe out there. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>